Hello, welcome back to another read aloud today by me, Mr. Daniel Agree. So today I will be doing a chapter read aloud of a few chapters of The One and Only Ivan. It's written by Catherine Applegate. The One and Only Ivan is for grades fifth and six. It's a graded reading level S, which is recommended for fourth and fifth grades. This book is a children's literature fiction novel. However, this book is one I highly recommend to any reader at some point as it deals with hope, friendship, and was inspired by a real silverback gorilla named Ivan who was held captive for 27 years. This book looks at compassion for animals. Students, I know you will enjoy this book because the story is of a gorilla named Ivan, elephants named Stella and Ruby, and a stray dog named Bob. Who doesn't love a story of animals and told by an animal? Have you heard of a gorilla that makes artwork and watches TV? Well, if not, then students will love hearing about what Ivan can do and what the animals will fight for. This book is broken into small chapters and using simple language to allow all students to grasp the meaning. So today, as I'm reading the story, we're gonna, I'm gonna read a few chapters and I'm gonna show you how to think aloud as we're reading and what questions you might ask to be able to understand the reading. Okay, so let's begin at the one and only Ivan. We're gonna start at chapter one and they're small chapters. Uh, before we begin, let's take a quick look and predict what the story might be about. So we have our front cover here, as you can see the one and only Ivan. So I see a picture here of an elephant and a gorilla. It looks like there's a spotlight on them. We can see some maybe forest in the background. So I'm thinking we're, the book is talking about an elephant and a gorilla and also looking at maybe the forest. Okay, let's see if we can see any pictures in our book. Oh, I see a picture of a gorilla and that's a banana peel there, banana. Okay, let's see if I can find any other pictures in our book here so we can predict maybe what the story might be about. Okay, I see a billboard here about animals. So maybe we're looking at a zoo or something or where animals might be kept. Maybe this is a circus or something. We'll, we'll find out. Well, let's see, we have a few more pictures here. Oh, I don't really like this picture too much. There's an elephant and it's kind of circled. And does that elephant look happy or sad? Yeah, it looks kind of sad. It's kind of sad. So clearly we're gonna be looking at maybe treatment of animals, we see some clouds. So we're gonna clearly be looking at nature. nature. What other predictions might we make from pictures? Maybe what the story is about or what's happening. So I see a picture here and what does that look like? Looks like a gorilla print, maybe some artwork was taking place. Okay, so artwork will be involved. And then we see a picture of a gorilla and it looks like the gorilla is painting and there's a, an elephant asleep over here, but the gorilla is working hard. So based on looking at our few pictures here in our chapter book, we can figure out what the characters and maybe a few events that might take place. Okay, and so once again, the one and only Ivan. So let's begin with chapter number one. Hello, I am Ivan. I am a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. Chapter Names. People call me the Freeway Gorilla, the Ape at Exit 8, the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. The names are mine, but they're not me. I am Ivan, just Ivan, only Ivan. Humans waste words. They toss them like banana peels and leave them to rot. Everyone knows the peels are the best part. I suppose you think gorillas can't understand you. Of course, you also probably think we can't walk upright. Try knuckle walking for an hour. You tell me which way is more fun. I've learned to understand human words over the years, but understanding human speech is not the same as understanding humans. Humans speak too much. They chatter like chimps, crowding the world with their noise, even when they have nothing to say. 
It took me some time to recognize all those human sounds to weave words into things. But I was patient. Patience is a useful way to be when you're an ape. Gorillas are as patient as stones. Humans, not so much. Okay, so on these first few pages here, I'm seeing that the gorilla has different names. The gorilla wants to be recognized as Ivan. The gorilla also has patience and is talking about his interactions and viewing of humans and trying to figure out um, about humans and the human speech. So we can tell that this is the point of view of Ivan, a gorilla. How I look. I used to be a wild gorilla, a gorilla's sly, a gorilla's shy gaze, a gorilla's sly smile. I wear a snowy saddle of fur, the uniform of a silverback. When the sun warms my back, I cast a gorilla's majestic shadow. In my size, humans see a test of themselves. They hear fighting words on the wind. When I am thinking is how the late day sun reminds me of a ripe nectarine. I'm mightier than any human. 400 pounds of pure power. My body looks made for battle. My arms outstretched span taller than the tallest human. My family tree spreads wild and as well. I am a great ape and you are a great ape. And so are chimpanzees and orangutans and bonobos, all of us distant and distressful cousins. I know this is troubling. I too find it hard to believe there is a connection across time and space, linking me to a race of ill-mannered clowns, chimps. There's no excuse for them. So as you can tell here, this is the text that I'm reading. And at the top, we have the chapters, headings, about what we're talking about. And so here, the gorilla is giving us an imagery of what he looks like, what he thinks others think he looks like, and his family tree of what other species. The Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. I live in a human habitat called the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. We are conveniently located off I-95 with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year. Max says that when he answers the trilling telephone. Matt works here at the mall. He is the boss. I work here too. I am the gorilla. At the Big Top Mall, a creaky music carousel spins all day, and monkeys and parrots live amid the merchants. In the middle of the mall is a ring with benches where humans can sit on their rumps while they eat soft pretzels. The floor is covered with sawdust made of dead trees. My domain is one of as at one end of the ring, I live here because I am too much gorilla and not enough human. Stella's domain is next to mine. Stella is an elephant. She and Bob, who is a dog, are my dearest friends. At present, I do not have any gorilla friends. My domain is made of thick glass and rusty metal and rough cement. Stella's domain is made of metal bars. The sun bear's domain is wood. The parrot's is wire mesh. Three of my walls are glass. One of them is cracked, and a small piece about the size of my hand is missing from its bottom corner. I made the hole with a baseball bat Matt gave me for my sixth birthday. After that, he took the bat away, but he let me keep the baseball that came with it. A jungle scene is painted on one of my domain walls. It has a waterfall without water and flowers without scent and trees without roots. I didn't paint it. Okay, so here we can see in our text, thinking about what we read here and one of us at the one and only Ivan, 
So what am I thinking we might be reading about as we're reading this text here? So I see that we are now in a mall. It's at the Big Top Mall and Video Arcade is where the animals are at. We see characters such as the elephant, the dog, and Ivan here is, is narrating the story about the domains that they're all in. So we learn the, the setting, where it's taking place. And we see that this, maybe this front cover here, where we thought maybe this was nature. This is really a painting that was drawn. It's not actually the outside. It's just a painting that was drawn. And we, and we get a lot of details and imagery about this setting. So we can really get that picture in our minds of what this story is going to be about. Enjoy the way the shapes flow across my wall, even if it must, isn't much of a jungle. I am lucky. My domain has three windowed walls. I can see the whole mall and a bit of the world beyond. The frantic pinball machines, the pink billows of cotton candy, the vast and treeless parking lot. Beyond the lot is a freeway where cars stampede without end. A giant sign at its edge beckons them to stop and rest like gazels at a watering hole. The sign is faded, the colors bleeding, but I know what it says. Mac reads its words aloud one day. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. Sadly, I cannot read, although I wish I could. Reading stories would make a fine way to fill my empty hours. Once, however, I was able to enjoy a book left in my debane by one of the keepers. It tasted like termite. The freeway billboard has a drawing of Mac in his clown clothes and Stella on her hind legs and an angry animal with fierce eyes and unkept hair. That animal is supposed to be me. But the artist made a mistake. I am never angry. So we see a picture here of the billboard now. And we're talking about the characters and, and the people that are coming to this mall and the, the domains. And we're also talking about how Ivan wishes he could read. Anger is precious. A silverback uses anger to maintain order and warn his troop of danger. When my father beat his chest, it was to say, beware, listen, I am in charge. I am angry to protect you because that is what I was born to do. Here in my domain, there is no one to protect. The littlest big top on earth. My neighbors here, at the Big Top Mall know many tricks. They are educated lot, more accomplished than I am. One of my neighbors plays baseball, although she is a chicken. Another drives a fire truck, although he is a rabbit. I used to have a neighbor, a sleek and thoughtful seal, who could balance a ball on her nose from dawn till dusk. Her voice was like the throaty bark of a dog chained outside on a cold night. Children wished on pennies and tossed them into her plastic pool. They glowed on the bottom like flat copper stones. The seal was hungry one day, or bored perhaps, so she ate 100 pennies. Mac said she'd be fine. He was mistaken. Mac calls our show the littlest big top on earth. Every day at two, four, and seven, Humans fan themselves, drink sodas, applaud. Babies wail, act dressed like a clown, pedals a tiny bike. A dog named Snickers rides on Stella's back. Stella sits on a stool. It is a very sturdy stool. I don't do any tricks. Max says it's enough for me to be me. Stella told me that some circuses move from town to town. They have humans who dangle on ropes twining from the tops of tents. They had grumbling lions with gleaming teeth and a snaking line of elephants, each clutching the limp tail in front of her. The elephants look far off to the distance so they won't see the humans who want to see them. 
Our circus doesn't migrate. We sit where we are, like an old beast, too tired to push on. After our sheen show, humans forage through the stores. A store is where humans buy things they need to survive. At the Big Top Mall, some stores sell new things, things like balloons and t-shirts and caps to cover the gleaming heads of humans. Some, some stores sell old things, things like smelly, dusty, and damp, and long forgotten. All day, I watch humans scurry from store to store. They pass their green paper, dry as old leaves, and smelling of a thousand hands back and forth and back again. They hunt frantically, stalking, pushing, grumbling. Then they leave, clutching bags filled with things, bright things, soft things, big things, but no matter how full the bags, they always come back for more. Humans are clever indeed. They spin pink clouds you can eat. They build domains with flat waterfalls, but they are lousy hunters. So as we're reading on this chapter, the littlest big top on earth, Ivan describes to us the habitat, the mall that we're at, and what he's hearing from Stella the Elephant about what outside might look like, other circuses and how they are. But what we can really gather from Ivan is he's very bored. He seems like he's uninterested, doesn't have any tricks he does, and he's just kind of tired of this circus. It seems like we're already getting that impression. And so I'm gonna stop here after this chapter and say, so, the next chapters that come up are Gone and Artist on page numbers 14 and 15. So I highly encourage you to finish this novel. It's a really great chapter book. Again, The One and Only Ivan by Catherine, by Catherine Applegate. So the main idea of the book is on hope, friendship, loyalty, confinement, and compassion for animals. We see a theme emerge in the book as animal rights and animal cruelty, as these animals are stuck in a shopping mall far away from any natural habitat and are forced to perform tricks. Additionally, the story looks at ultimately the healing power of art and is a hopeful story. And if you continue um, in reading, you'll see how Ivan uses his art as a way to escape. Thank you for watching today my read aloud of the one and only Ivan. I hope you enjoyed it. And I've included some discussion questions on my website below um, that will allow you to think deeper about the novel. I hope you go check out the book and read some more. All right, see you next time.